What's better than a home brew after a hard day's work? Yeah, nothing. <sighs> Happy Home Brew Wednesday, everybody. That's Jay Poor here from Little Face Brewing. Hope you're all doing well. I'm tired. It's been one of those weeks. Let's see. Let's start off. What do we got going? Well, I transferred over my Irish Red into a secondary uh, Saturday? No. Monday. Monday. Today is Wednesday. Yeah, I did that on Monday. Transferred that over and I kegged MM's Belgian. Uh, what she called it, the name of her, her Belgian is a not so girly Belgian. <laughs> Good name for the beer. This is a proper beer. It turned out really nice. Uh, the taste test that I had on it, you know, in the well, I was kegging it. Uh, it's really nice. It's what it is. It's a it's a Belgian that's set in the secondary in a orange and cranberry chutney. Um, when you take your first sip of it, now I know the carbonation is going to help this out a lot, um, but when you when you take your first taste of it, you kind of get that, that orange peel and orange, it's like actually a combination of orange and orange peel. Excuse me. And then it moves into a real nice transition into the cranberries, which is not overpowering at all. Very smooth. Very nice transition. Very uh, pleasant. It's about the best way I can I can per, I can describe that particular beer is that it's incredibly pleasant. Very nice beer. Finishes off quite dry. Uh, because she got every bit out of that yeast. Uh, finished out at, at, at 10.06. So uh, it was what, 10? I want to say 10.58 to begin with. And uh, 10.06 to finish. So you do the math. 7.72% ABV. Cheers to that. What are we going to be doing here shortly? Well... I'm going to be doing, uh, uh, I got some honey and stuff to do some meads. I got to, I got to get a couple meads going. I don't have any <clears throat> doing anything right now. So I need to get a couple meads underway, get them little fermenters filled up so they can set. Uh, I like having them full with, uh, with meads in them because then I don't have to worry about them. They're out of mind, out of sight. And, uh, the, 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 the. Meat yeasties can do their do their magic. What else do we have? I got to do another lemonade. The lemonade's all gone, so I want to get another one of those. Um, I'm going to do a smash beer, and um, well, what I'll do is, is I'll go into what uh, uh, what brought this on. So the guys out over in the UK, uh, Zippy would be Berserker Brewery. I think Harry's in it. I'm not sure. I think Jonah's in it. There's a couple of the guys over there that uh, <clears throat> that did a Smash Beer challenge uh, over there. And ever since I spoke with uh, Zippy, Zippy and I were on uh, Uvu one night, and uh, it was a couple weeks ago. And uh, we sat there, and he and I talked. We had a fantastic conversation about Smash Beer and what a true Smash Beer is. Um, and there's a man with a wealth of knowledge right there. Zippy knows, Zippy knows his stuff. If you want to learn, if you want to be schooled, talk to that man. He's the one to talk to. He, uh, he knows his shit. There's no doubt about it. We got to talking, and uh, he had brought up a really cool way of uh, of doing a smash beer. Now, I'm trying to think, was it Scusi we were talking to? Because he's in it as well. 
And uh, he had done something with his mash uh, that kind of pushed the boundaries of their of their smash beer. And it was funny because I could tell that what he did was you know a bit out of the boundaries, but it was cool, you know. So uh, trying to remember what it was, it had it, it had to do with with his mash, and I can't remember exactly but anyways Zippy and I were talking and he came up with alright so you know I'm sitting there and I never thought of this stuff before he was saying about alright so you take your your single your first runnings if you want to take say you're using uh, 10 pounds of, of, of two row okay <clears throat> you take that first runnings which is typically if you're doing a five gallon batch you're looking at probably uh, two, what, uh, two, two and a half gallons off your first runnings. What he said to do was is you take that two, two and a half gallons and you boil it, right? Now you go ahead and, and you start doing your second runnings and uh, you might want to actually take those second runnings a little bit further than what you would normally because what you're going to do with the first runnings is you're going to take that over and you're going to boil it down. Uh, and what he did basically, what he said was is one of the things you could do is as you reduce that down by half, okay, and what that does is that uh, caramelizes, you know, your your first runnings. So you can actually take a pale beer, you know, that's going to be, you know, a little bit on the pale side, excuse me, and you can darken it up. You can add some crystal notes to it just by boiling it down and you're and you're crystallizing it and you're reducing it down so you're changing the, the you know the, the 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 makeup of of that beer it's still a smash beer but you're just messing around with what you're doing with that with that grain i remember what it was he took scusi took some of his grains and he roasted them uh prior to to mash uh prior to the mash and again, that's a cool idea. Okay, if you're in a, and if you don't specify that that's part of you know the of the of the of the of the uh, experiment, we'll say to speak, then that's what you call taking your uh, you know taking uh, uh, a liberal approach <laughs> to a smash beer. It's still two row, so technically, it's still two row grain. He just stuck it in his oven and he and he and he and he roasted it a little bit, in essence changing it, but it was still too rough. Thought that was cool. You'll know what I'm talking about, Ski, if you're watching. Uh, and I thought that was cool. Again, that's something else you can do. So uh, so yeah, I'm, I'm looking at doing that. You know, I'm looking at doing one of those. And of course, I'm just doing it on my own. You know, those guys did it and they're trading their beers around, and that's awesome. Uh, my, I just want to do it for myself as a, an educational experiment via one brewer, and that being me. So that's pretty cool. Um, we've got. Oh, I want to. I put my my challenge beer together. Oh yeah, I've got a couple ideas. I'm not letting the cat out of the bag yet, but uh, I got a couple ideas on on uh, putting something out there. In years past, uh, these challenges. I'll be honest, I've not been able to put my best beer out because I get you get so consumed with making sure the challenge goes through that all the work that you're doing, you know, making sure everybody gets their packages, you know, and divvying everything up and the whole nine yards, you don't get the opportunity to actually brew, you know, um, your beer. Well, that ain't the case this year, baby. <laughs> I want to put something unique out there. Um, I haven't made up my mind just yet what it's going to be, but it's going to be unique. And I might do a test batch. If I can get a free couple minutes, I want to do a test batch and put it together. So that ought to be cool. That's pretty much all I have right now for Homebrew Wednesday. Um, there will be updates probably before the end of the week on the challenge. So stay tuned for those. And uh, deadline's approaching, guys. If you haven't done so, go to the website, register, 
so we can get our final numbers to see where we're at. I believe registration closes on the 16th of April. Um, so if you haven't done so, go get her done. Get her done. All right, folks, this is S.J. Poor from Little Face Brewing. Enjoy the fruits of your labor, folks.